Um, this is Red Band answering the question from his fans. Would he book Brendan Shaw to perform at his club? Curse you to find a kid subreddit. Let's fucking go and see what he has to say. Chat room. Everyone in the chat room. Good. How's it going? Brian, uh, are you booking Brendan Shaw any time soon at the Sunstrip ATX? I mean, I wouldn't be against it. Uh, Brendan probably sells tickets and I'm in it for the money. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I mean, sure. I, I, you know, there's not many people I wouldn't book. You know, if they can sell tickets, they sell tickets. That's how I look at it, you know. And uh, Brendan's not uh, uh, a joke thief or he's not doing anything like that. So, <laughs> at, at least that I know of. But I like Brendan. He's a nice guy. So, nothing against Brendan. But, yeah, I'm sure he would sell. I'm sure he would sell that shit out. So, if he wanted to, if he wanted to, uh, he'd definitely go there. But I feel like he, he could probably do a bigger place than my place. I don't know. So, interesting fucking comment from him, right? Interesting fucking comment all over the striking thing about this response is that in no way in that response did he mention anything about brendan being funny he just said yeah he can sell tickets so of course he can play in my club <laughs> what a <bizarre. coughs> oh shit god see you can tell i had a couple of talks oh my god <coughs> i'm not built for this life i'm not with khalifa fucking hell mate i'm no khalifa that's what i am i'm fucking no khalifa Aggie no Khalifa, fucking hell. <clears throat> wow, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Not doing that again. So, going back to what I was saying. Uh, Red Band saying that, hey... I don't really care if he's not funny or not. If he can sell tickets, I'm going to fucking book him. That's absolutely fucking weird. Very, very weird. Um, the fucking moral barometer, right? The, the bar of morality as a comedian is... Are you a joke thief or not? If you're not a joke thief, you can basically get away with anything. Which explains a lot, right? Which explains why, essentially, Bobby Lee was a diddler back in the day, right? He would go to Tijuana and essentially try and smash fucking 16-year-olds. And that was okay because he doesn't steal people's jokes. <laughs> Brian rapes. That's okay, too. You don't steal jokes. <laughs> Chris D'Elia diddles. That's okay, too, in some respects. You don't steal jokes. Actually, Chris D'Elia, interesting thought I just had. Maybe part of the reason why Chris D'Elia kind of got he's self-counseled as well from the comedy community is more so to do with other people hating hear me out so what he did was obviously abhorrent awful throw him under the jail you know fucking run him over with a tank but most likely there were comedians in that scene that didn't like him before that anyway that didn't like that he was so successful that he had all the girls coming to see him he was basically matt rife before matt rife right chris Delia. So maybe when he got cancelled, they all saw that as an opportunity to fucking kick him out of the little scene community, which would then free up some space for them to go and perform at certain clubs. Maybe there was a part of that in it. Because it, in some respects, I don't think Chris Lee is the only guy that has, you know, a semi-cult, is taking advantage of young and impressionable young women and shit. That's kind of the MO of these comedian guys. I don't know why it is. Maybe because it's like a nightlife type of scene thing. But all of them seem to have like weirdo creepo shit in their fucking skeletons. They love a, they love a, yeah, come round the corner so I can give you my tips on how to be a successful comedian. And then fucking two seconds later, the young and impressionable lady is down on her knees fucking inspecting the guy's genitals. You know what I mean? They have a weird way of fucking, you know, ingratiating themselves in the community and bringing people in and stuff. So I think the Crystalia stuff had less to do with them being you know, having principles or morals and saying, oh, we can't associate with this guy who's a diddler and more to do with them saying, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to kind of kick him out, um, you know, and basically take up his flipping spots and space. The same sort of thing happened to Louis C.K. People were basically pretending to be outraged with Louis C.K., right? And acting like they were shocked when everybody kind of knew what his kink was and what he was up to. But they also took it as an opportunity to kind of kick him because they didn't like that he was the most successful comedian and he had that brand of comedy. So I think the same happened to Chris Delia. I think so. Weird theory. You know my hot takes are always fucking awful. So do with that, do with that as you please. But going back to what fucking Red Band said, right? Um, it's an interesting thing to say about Brendan because he's assuming Brendan sells tickets. He's also saying it doesn't really matter if you're funny or not. If you sell tickets, you're going to get booked at most clubs. The reason why that's so funny, these guys, part of the reason why some fans don't like the GRE Extended Universe comedians... <clears throat> and podcasters is because they take themselves super seriously they take being a stand-up comedian similarly to fucking being an architect or something right they legitimately hold up their craft 
at the highest levels. Whereas myself, being a DJ, I honestly think, I honestly think stand-up comedy and DJing is probably at the same level. It's at the bottom of the entertainment industry. It's probably just a bit above improv comedy, right? It's like the lowest form of entertainment, the lowest form of fucking artistic expression, really and truly. But for some reason, these guys don't. So that's okay. Fair enough, you think really highly about yourself and you think you're the fucking big dog and all that malarkey, cool. But then if you think stand-up comedy is the most important thing in the world, it's the last bastion of free speech and all this shit, how, how, how are you going to have no quality standards about who gets on the stage of your clubs and stuff? You're just going to base it based on fucking ticket sales. So essentially doing the same things that these fucking corporate overlords are doing and the same thing that these mainstream media fucks are doing. Where if you sell tickets and you're, you've got a fan base or whatever, you're going to get involved. So nothing to do about your ideas, nothing to do about what your view of the world is, your principles, your morals, your outlook, your perspective. Nah, if you can sell tickets, you can get on my stage. And the funny thing about it, the really bad thing about it is that all these guys are so fucking snaky. They're so... that The one thing I'm going to say this to be clear and again i haven't met these guys and i'm only basing this based on hours and hours and hours of content i've watched similar to you guys you've watched these guys a lot over the years i know i have i started watching joe rogan fucking podcast when he started doing it in his house right i'm an og fan so i'm sure most of you guys are the same and i think if you're an og fan of somebody unfortunately especially for myself you get to know them pretty well if they spend a lot of time doing content you get to know their personality quite well so i can tell and i can read these guys from the content i've seen on them on camera that these guys are the most backstabby gossipy ass bitches in the world so he says what he says there about brendan but most likely in the green rooms of clubs whenever they're trashing him he's joining in on the jokes he's all ha ha he he in but then he's also saying yeah i'll book you at my club because you sell tickets they're the most fakest guys in the world horrible 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 for sure if you're in the green room of a comedy club and you leave to go do your set, best believe everybody in there is going to be talking about you. Good or bad, they're going to be talking about you. Gossiping. Did you hear that? Did you hear this? He sold this tickets. His wife did this. His kid did this. They're going to be doing that, which is fucking awful. They're, they're actually bigger haters than anybody on any fucking subreddit ever. I don't care what they say. Comedians are the biggest haters in the fucking world. They despise each other's success and they fucking... You know, they go out their way to cook and undermine it. And you know why I say that? I say that because I find it really odd how all of them go out of their way to fucking suck off fucking Joe Rogan. And you know why they do that? Joe Rogan's the best guy. He created a community. He brought us together. Blah, 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 blah. Sucking him off, sucking him off, sucking him off. You know why they say that? They say that because they know if they were in Joe Rogan's position, they wouldn't do that. I've said it plenty of times on this fucking stream. You may not like Joe Rogan, he may be insufferable and he may get on your nerves, but best believe if any of these other guys were in Joe Rogan's position, Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, fucking whoever, Tom Papa, none of these guys would do what Rogan does, where he kind of invites just about anybody on his fucking podcast to come and hang out. He gives everybody a chance to kind of, you know, make a name for themselves and change, you know, the future trajectory of their fucking career. They know none of them will do that. They would all keep the wealth for themselves. They wouldn't be like trying to spread the wealth or, you know, um, have people appear on their podcasts and shit. Nah, they'd be keeping it all on themselves. That's why they make such a big deal out of Rogan because they know if they had the power and the fame and the money and the clout that he does, they would not do that in the slightest. They wouldn't do it. So they, that's why they're so shocked about it. But anyway, I thought that, I thought that was a very interesting conversation or point that Red Band made. I think... Him assuming Brendan sells tickets, it's fucking hilarious. Um, Brendan's in a really bad position right now, isn't it? If you think about it. Brendan's in a really bad spot. Because Brendan not only now is being mocked about not being funny, he's also now getting to a position where he's clearly not selling tickets anymore. Which, I don't know what the reason is behind that. Because I don't... <sighs> we to say, so we can all think Brendan's not funny, but I don't think his fans think that. Because comedy is subjective right Burt Crasher gets on stage takes off his t-shirt and gets a standing ovation right to some of us that's fucking redacted but some people think it's funny same thing goes for like Taylor Swift music I hear Taylor Swift music music and I'm like oh this, this is fucking shit but some people are fucking going crazy to it so art to some respects is kind of subjective 
So I don't think it's because fans are realizing he's not funny. I just think he's, I don't know, maybe rinsed out his fan base. I don't know. Or maybe um, comedians or entertainers, whoever, they go through a little lull in their career. Like, even if you're a DJ or you're a singer, maybe that happens. Like, you tour all the time, but then there's only so many tours you can do. No, there's only, only there's only so many tickets you can sell. And there's only so many fans that you have. So maybe at one, some point, you reach like a point where like for six months or maybe longer, your fans are just a bit like, they're kind of over it because they've seen you all the time. Um, so you have to, have to take a break and then make them want you again, create that bit of desirability and then come back around. Maybe. I'm not really too sure. But I'm actually curious as to why he seems to be finding it harder to sell tickets now. And it's not to do with the capacity. Don't think that. Because he's having trouble selling tickets to like comedy clubs and shit. Clearly, he's not got, he's not like, you know, because the bookings are slowed down. And we know, again, these comedy clubs don't care about your, your quality of comedy. They don't care what you do on that stage. As long as you can bring, bring people through the door to have some drinks, right? Uh, have some drinks, have some fucking chicken fingers, right? They're going to book you. So clearly, these comedy venue bookers are seeing that Brendan's ticket sales aren't justifying them giving him a weekend or whatever. Something's happened. I don't know what. What do you guys think? What's your theory? I'm not really too sure because I don't, I don't buy all oh, the fans don't think it's funny anymore. Something's happened. Like his ticket sales have just gone all the way down and he's not getting books as much as he was before. What do you guys think in the chat? Let me, let me know. What do you guys think in the chat? Uh, Brendan Shorb's Phantom fans. What are people saying here? Shorb would have gone to Austin if he was actually invited. Do tattoo the state of Austin on his body. Then told him he wasn't actually included. <laughs> Yo, truck walking with Annie. That's such a good point, man. He tried to make like, I'm, I've got a theory that he knew Rogan was going to go to Austin and he tried to kind of preempt it by getting a tattoo because his lie about that was that, what did he say? That um, uh, Austin was a place that he sold the most tickets. That's why he got the tattoo. It's like, what? But that makes sense though, because, you know, he named his kid Boston and he's got no connection to Boston. So maybe he's one of those kind of guys. Just, you know, makes no sense. Um, what people are saying here, he lost Togan's approval. Uh, I don't think that would affect his ticket sales and hashtag. I don't think so, personally. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think losing Rogan's approval would affect your ticket sales, personally. Uh, Josie says, going to the same place every six months, no one wants to see the same hour. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. I think it's more to do with that. I think... How do I say this? I think, most likely, he does have good markets. Like it or not, he does sell some tickets. So I'm sure, between him and his agent, Booker, whatever... They book the same, I don't know, six to ten venues, and then they kind of cycle through those. But all you know, Brendan's not like he's not fucking Dave Chappelle. He's not David Tell. I mean, he's not writing new bits every time he's going on stage. He's just honing the stuff that he already has. Um, so if that's the case, he's definitely performing a lot of the same material. And this is something they all do. Brian Callen's the same. He's known for it. He's like a Bobby Lee. He's been performing the same stick for like 10 years plus. So I'm sure Brendan does it too. So most likely, he's completely like tapped out his audience. Um, Quell is saying, picking up Bobby turned off the sales because people only like Papa by proxy of other comedians. Oh, interesting. Quella, you might have a point there. Picking on Bobby turned off his sales because people only like Papa by proxy of other comedians. That might be actually true because I've always said, right, part of Brendan... No, the, the Brendan that was the funniest or the Brendan that was a good vibe was when he was on a uh, fight companion with Joe Rogan, the early times. And if you were, if you look back at those videos, he was like the lovable jock. Like he was a redact and he kind of knew it and kind of played his role. The moment he started to believe he was like, you know, the next big thing, that's when it started to get crazy. But he had that period where he was okay to play the role as like the lovable doofus jock kind of guy. Um... But also, it's because you saw how his friends reacted to him. You saw Eddie Bravo laughing at his jokes, Brian laughing at his jokes, Joe Rogan laughing at his jokes. And if you're fans of those guys and they find that guy funny, as Koyla said by proxy, you're like, oh, that guy must be cool. But then the moment that fucking, you know, um, the veil was pulled from away from our eyes and we got to hear how he was like behind the scenes with someone like a Bobby Lee, who everybody like treats like a fucking toddler, even though he's 60 years old or some shit, right? It's fucking weird, but still, people like Bobby Lee. So when we found out that he's like bullying people behind the scenes, using Joe Rogan's name to intimidate people, and just doing nonsense, trying to fuck 
other comedians' wives and girlfriends and stuff. Because that's, again, that's another thing that doesn't get spoken about enough. Like, this guy tried to fuck <laughs> Bobby Lee's wife or girlfriend, you know, Kalila at the time. Like, that just gets completely looked over. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, but, yeah, maybe that's true. Maybe that's actually true. Um, B, Sean says, let's face it, all these pods are getting tired and lame. Yep, agree with that. Tim Dillon was never Hollywood. Hello isn't what I just said. Oh, true. Oh, sorry, Natasha, you're right. Um, uh, Sean says, Baba used to think he was a connection to the younger crowd until he went to Logan's a pod and he was reminded he's a boomer. Yeah, very good point also. Very good point. To be fair to, to, be fair to Brendan, though, he's not really that kind of guy. He always struck me as the kind of dude who, like, at 27, wanted to act like he was 37. He's never really been young. He's always surrounded himself with, like, older dudes to be successful, obviously. But then when he tries to, like, be down with the kids, like you said, he gets on fucking Logan Paul's podcast and they remind him, hey, you know, you, nobody knows who you are. You know what I mean? You're boomer. <laughs> That's still one of the most embarrassing appearances ever, man. I feel so bad for him, man. Honestly, I felt so fucking bad for him. He was treated like a fucking peon. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Look at Santino. His career took off by being cool with Rogan and Bobby Lee. And didn't try to smash their friends. Yes, exactly. Got a good point. Papa got nothing that he's good at anymore. He would feel like a loser deep down. Nothing he can build an identity off of. Yep, right. Very true, Alex Knox. Uh, Papa even tried to smash Annie because Rogan had a two-week crush on her. Yeah, true. Oh, actually, you know what? When's the last time Annie Lederman was on fucking Joe Rogan? Has she been on there since? Um, Because maybe that rumor that uh, BGL said she was banned is true. I haven't seen her on JRE in a very long time. Oh, some, oh no, she's been on recently. She's been on. Where has she been on? 2000, okay, 2021 she was on last time. 2021. Wow. Right, 2021? Did someone say Anne Liederman is pregnant or something? Who said she was pregnant? Did someone tell me she was pregnant? Is she pregnant? I don't know. Okay, she's been on since 2021. Fair play. Uh, Joe, hates, Joe hates her now. <laughs> Why do you think... <laughs> I wonder why. It wouldn't surprise me if Joe actually hates her because of the Brendan stuff. Maybe in Joe's head, his way of conflict resolutioning with comedians is that they call each other. He prefers they call each other, have conversation. He doesn't like them when they air out their business online. I think that's part of Joe's problem. So maybe that's why he doesn't like her anymore because of that. He feels like she should have maybe come to him before and spoken about it. But it's like, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, in my opinion, I've always said this before, and I, this is something I will say to most men. Be careful who you send messages to and also be careful who you creep who you do your creep shit to. Because whoever you engage in your creep shit conversation, they have a right to do whatever they want with it. So if they decide to try and destroy your family <laughs> or try and sue you or expose you or something, you have no business in determining what they do. Like, you, you can't say anything. You have to just basically eat it. So be very, very careful what you say to people and how you communicate with them. Like, in general, just leave people alone, really and truly. Unless you're actually trying to pursue them in a really serious way, leave them alone. Like, it's not worth trying to slip in someone's DM for a fucking truck walk and then suddenly now your whole fucking business is being blown up on the fucking internet. It's not fucking worth it. But you know what? What do I know? <laughs> <laughs>